Hello guys, today I want to talk about sword and buckler myths, and specifically the most prevalent one, for which I blame 133, the oldest fencing manuscript in Europe, and specifically how a lot of Hema people interpret it and understand it. Now when I see the dumbest myths, that's not necessarily an insult to people who believe them. A lot of smart people believe dumb shit, so that's fine, don't take it personally. Or do, I don't care. Some sources are really shitty and confusing and 133 is the textbook example of that. Mostly because a lot of people treat it like a textbook. The first myth. The Type 14 arming sword was used in 133. This one is really baffling, but the belief that a certain treatise requires the use of a certain type of sword is not necessarily uncommon. A lot of people, for example, claim that uh, for Fiora de Liberi's work, you need to use a short or long sword. At the same time, even later systems are generally pretty universal and specify only very broad blade and hilt characteristics. But this is stranger because Type 14 is a modern classification and also there is absolutely zero indication that they are depicted in 133. If anything, the manuscript shows something closer to a Type 15 from the Oksha typology. And considering the level of artistic accuracy in that sword specifically, it probably just illustrates a sword. Where did this myth come from? Rowan Varzicha and a lot of early Hema people. Which is quite ironic considering just recently Varzicha proposed that 133 swords were actually longer than what is typically used in Hema today. Unlike Type 14, which is shorter and which he has used and promoted for years. Whatever happened, the myth is here to stay. My second favorite one. Leg hits don't work. If I get a penny for every time a sword and buckler fencer tells me no, leg hits are not a good idea, the legs are dangerous to attack, I would probably have a lot more swords. Is it true that attacks to lower openings are more risky? Yes, but that doesn't mean that you don't use them. And they're specifically less risky when you have two weapons. Attacking the legs is fundamental in any sword and shield source. Only not in 133. But where do we get the warning that we shouldn't attack the legs? In one single play, where we're told that if the priest attacks low, he's gonna be in danger to his head. That's it. That's the whole basis of not using leg hits. The fact that you can cut low with the sword and parry the, with the buckler high, which is shown in numerous different manuscripts across different systems, seems to be not so obvious to many people. Not to mention this leads to a classic pedagogical trap. Leg hits are easy to counter, so you don't bother learning how to counter them much. You don't train it a lot. And on the reverse side, your partner knows that leg hits don't really work well, so he doesn't throw a lot of them, he doesn't train them to be effective, and when you both get out of your fantasy land and you meet people who don't live there, what happens? You get your legs destroyed, that's what. And the final one, the buckler covers the sword hand. And I think this one is the most insidious, because it is partially true. The buckler in many situations should cover the sword hand, but that is more of a side effect of it covering everything behind it. This is perhaps best illustrated by Giacomo di Grassi in his 1570 manuscript, where he shows with just a few lines how big of a shield a small buckler can be as far as protection goes. It is true that when sword and buckler work together, it's good to have covered the sword hand with the buckler. But that idea, when turned into an axiom, leads to a lot of weird stuff. Like thinking that the sword and buckler should always be kept together. Which is patently untrue. Even in 133, there are numerous guards show them apart, and there's nothing in the text or the illustrations that indicates they're always magnetized, even when they appear so from the one single angle that we see them from. Another one, that you would flatten the buckler like a pancake on your sword hand, which actually makes it cover you less, because it covers only the hand and it doesn't cover as well what is behind it, which are also important parts. 
And finally, that means that people don't learn how to protect the sword hand on its own, either when the buckler is far away or just not available. But that issue leads to another set of issues of Hima sword and buckler, about which I'll talk another time. Thank you, and bye-bye.